Warp Stabilizer is a great plugin that comes with Premiere Pro to fix shaky handheld footage, but it doesn't always get it right or give you the desired results. This footage is a fairly common candidate for Warp Stabilizer. You can see the uh, inconsistent uh, movement from left to right and then shaky footage standing still. So I'm going to apply the uh, Warp Stabilizer now to the clip by uh, dragging it on and it's uh, doing its analysis. Uh, once it's complete, uh, it will provide a stabilized version of it. As you can see, it's done quite a bit of cropping uh, already and this is how it plays through. You can see it's a little bit shaky at the beginning, uh, zoomed in quite a bit. Fairly smooth, however, the zooming is obviously very inconsistent there. So, one of the things that you can do is you can tweak warp stabilizer to um, do a little bit less stabilization or you can do a controlled stabilization in After Effects and then re-import it back into your Premiere Pro project. A controlled stabilization will allow you to identify the various components of the footage and apply different stabilization effects to those individual parts of the footage. Using a new clip, I will right mouse click on it and select Replace with After Effects Composition. This will open up After Effects. You'll be uh, prompted to uh, save it as an After Effects file. I'm just going to replace this uh, previous one that I did. And it will then open the uh, composition up with the uh, video clip that you had selected. Now using the uh, Stabilize Motion, we're going to click the button and it will give us a track point uh, in the middle of the image or the middle of the video. Um, we're going to size this track point uh, and then identify an object on the far right of the screen as far as we can get to the right as this image will move right to left. left. So we'll use this sentry here. Uh, and then we are going to track the motion of this particular item forward. So we will click the track forward button and as you can see it is now tracking the particular object and we'll stop it on the left here. So the next thing we want to do is now track the next segment. Uh, so again we're just going to follow the same procedure, uh, create a track point, uh, resizing so that we have uh, an area for our image, uh, identify something on the right hand side of the screen and those arched windows look to be a fairly good candidate. Excuse the uh, uh, slow refresh here, my GPU is a little bit slow, but there we go. Uh, so we've selected those windows and we are going to track that forward again as well. Again, following it from the right hand side all the way over to the left and then stopping it before it gets to the far left hand side. And we'll stop right there. And now the third part of this, uh, this panning uh, is going to be uh, our last one, uh, and so obviously an identifiable item there would be the cross on top of the church. So we'll move our track point to there, and we will track that forward. And again, um, the video will just run out here. So, we really haven't done anything yet other than identifying three segments of the video where we are tracking the uh, position of particular objects. And if I open this up here, the details, you can see the three trackers uh, with the various segments of the video, first, second, and third. Um, it has applied no actual information to the uh, video itself, and that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to select track one and then click apply. And what it will do is it will take the uh, information from the uh, first, first of all we're going to select X and Y coordinates, uh, it will take the information from the first tracker and apply it to the anchor point. Uh, so now we're going to do it to the second tracker, applying it again, X and Y. Uh, and you can see it's loading up the, uh, the um, points for the anchor point. And again, we'll do it with uh, Tracker 3 and Apply. So what this does is it uh, takes the, those particular objects within the frames 
that uh, are stable, and it tracks them throughout the movement of the video. And now it has applied that particular movement as it goes from right to left in the frame to the anchor point, which is nice, but it really doesn't do anything for us because only the first part of the video is visible, and then the whole video moves off screen. So we're going to set up some uh, keyframes on the position element. Uh, the first frame, obviously, is going to be our starting point. And uh, we'll set a keyframe around the area where the video starts to move off screen. So uh, right about there should do the job. Then we'll go to, uh, let's say, the midpoint so that we can just sort of get an idea of where the framing should be. Now, if we take the uh, anchor point value, and we use an approximate uh, value for the position value, it generally lines up fairly close to the mid-screen there. So we're just going to do a slight adjustment to, to get it in screen. So that's about our midpoint. Uh, the next point that we'll want to have a, as a placement is sort of the point where the video stops panning and stops in its final position. Uh, so it was around uh, 10 seconds or so. So we'll set our point up there again, adjusting our values uh, so that we get it in fair, fairly close proximity to the, the middle of the, uh, the active window there. Now we will be applying a little bit of cropping. So the black bars, you know, top, bottom, left, right, uh, most of them will be cropped out. However, we won't be zooming in too much, uh, probably around 105, 110%. So uh, we want to get it fairly close. Um, obviously, something like this would be a little bit too far off. So we're just going to set, again, another uh, position point. Uh, this is more for setting it up. And uh, we'll go back to this and revisit this uh, in just a few moments after we've set our sort of rough positions. And we'll set another one there on the right. Um, so again, these are just the rough positioning for where we're going to be making some adjustments. Now we've got our rough positioning. We're going to uh, create a pre-composition for this. So we'll uh, right mouse click and then select uh, pre-compose. Uh, we want to copy all of the uh, elements into the composition. And so now we have a composition of the video. You can see we uh, still see some of the uh, black bars there, so we're going to adjust our scaling and let's uh, try 100, let's try 110 percent and uh, that uh, reduces the black bars there. We're just going to scroll through a little bit, make sure that we're not uh, seeing anything that needs uh, some additional attention. So I can see right here in this area we've got uh, bit of an issue with regards to the video popping uh, or jumping up and down. So I'm going to zoom in on that area. You can see it there jumping. And what you can do is in the position elements, uh, or sorry, rather the anchor point elements, you can just remove a section of them. Uh, if you've got a fairly steady area, uh, it will tween between the uh, individual keyframes of the anchor point uh, in a very smooth fashion. Uh, so even though we're putting in keyframes for each position uh, within the anchor points, we can still remove some of them and uh, it will have very little effect on the, the movement of the video. Uh, so now that we've uh, sort of identified our, our primary areas, we're going to do some fine tuning on the position elements. Um, basically I want to have about three, and there we go, we deleted a couple of them there, and just fine tune those items. You can just move your keyframe over uh, so that it finds the best balance between the black bars showing on the left and the right. You sort of want to be within that 110% uh, uh, area. So we'll do a little bit of an adjustment here. So I'm just doing a little bit of nudging here on uh, some of the keyframes, just a little up, a little down, left, right, just so that our positioning transitions properly throughout the whole pan. But again, as you can see, we've only used three primary keyframes to adjust the stabilization that was done by After Effects. 
back to now to the composition and just have a quick look make sure that uh, the spot check looks okay and then I am going to do a full render and make sure that the transition appears the way that uh, it should okay so this is the uh, render um, it's fairly steady but there's a bit of twisting at the beginning there the pan across is all the same speed now uh, and uh, it comes to a fairly steady rest at the end there. So I want to do a little bit of tweaking um, of the movement, uh, eliminating some uh, keyframes that may um, seem to jump. But uh, first I'm going to uh, fix the sort of rotation of the camera at the beginning of the clip. So we're going to use Stabilize Motion again. Uh, this time we're going to select Rotation and Deselect Position. Uh, we do get uh, now two track points, and so we want to have two fairly identifiable elements. Again, we're going to use this sentry over here um, as one of our track points, and uh, that other sentry on the screen looks to be a good candidate as well. So again, we will take those points. You want to have them a fairly good distance apart so they can figure out the angles and make the uh, rotation adjustment properly. So again, we will uh, play that through, uh, or track forward. And we're going to stop when they get off the screen. I went a little bit too far there. So I'm going to select the, uh, the um, keyframes that I do not want. Um, so as you can see, when you're in the tracker, the keyframes are round, which means that you cannot select them. You can only select the diamonds, so you just expand the window until you get to the diamonds. Uh, so there's track point one. Again, we have two track points. So we'll take track point one, delete those keyframes that we don't want. Uh, we'll open up track point two again to gain access to the keyframes and select those items that we do not want. There we go. And delete those. So now we'll uh, apply this, uh, this rotation information to the, the image itself, or sorry, rather the uh, video itself. So we're going to uh, select the, uh, the motion source uh, on the right here as our video section. Uh, then we're going to make sure we've got Tracker 4. Uh, and then all we need to do is uh, hit the Apply button. And it will... Uh, put the rotation information in that first segment there. So we're just going to save this and then close it and then it will return us back into Premiere Pro um, and we can see our stabilized clip there. And uh, now in a comparison the warp stabilizer uh, versus the manual stabilize now, yeah, probably tweak it a little bit more to reduce some of that rotation in the uh, through port, but you could certainly do that. And then again, the handheld original. So that's how you uh, manually stabilize uh, a panning shot, which uh, again can be fairly difficult with warp stabilizer. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, please subscribe. We uh, plan on having some uh, more tutorials coming in the uh, coming months. Uh, and thanks for watching.